If you consider yourself a heartfelt or passionate woman, I'd be willing to bet you're not willing to settle for a mediocre or emotionally empty relationship. And since you're watching this video, I'd also be willing to bet that in your attempt to reach this ideal relationship summit, you've probably crashed and burned a few times already. The biggest problem I find is that no one has had a direct, helpful, and no BS conversation with you about what actually makes a difference in dating today. In this video, after having helped hundreds of women around the world attract their ideal relationships, I'm going to help you to save yourself from years of crashing against invisible walls and doors in your search for the one. There's three types of advice circulating the world today as it relates to intimacy, relationships, and love. The first one is the non-existent advice, which is probably what you didn't receive from your mom or your dad or your siblings or your education system. Second type of advice is the well-intentioned but really bad advice that most family members volunteer or blurt out sometimes when you least expect it and when you don't ask for it. And the third type of advice is an advice that is tactically helpful but failing to consider the depth and the truth of the human being stepping into said advice. So my goal today is to take a step back and show you some principles that are timeless, but also very applicable to the day-to-day -day experience of attracting your ideal partner right now so that you can save yourself from years of doing things that don't work and start feeling excited about the process of stepping into the best relationship of your life, first with yourself and then with another human being. The first advice you probably didn't receive is that this game of entering a relationship cannot be, in its essence, one of removing clouds. Let me clarify what I mean by that. I think that deep down in most human beings seeking a relationship, there is this myth that talks about the sunshine that their heart and their souls will experience when they finally meet their other one, the person they've been seeking. And while there is definitely a feeling of excitement and joy, I want you to flip this script around and think about a relationship as a magnifying glass, which means if your life is full of meaning and purpose and excitement and joy, and you choose wisely, second part, then your relationship will be one that includes those elements and magnifies and makes them brighter and bolder and sharper colors. If your life right now is one that is mixed in with drama and pain and anxiety, feeling of emptiness, then the relationship will seemingly bring some light to your life initially, but will become an addictive source of feeling and meeting your needs in ways that you should be stepping up for yourself. I'm not a proponent of you need to have an incredible life before you step into a relationship. But I am a proponent of if there are things or reasons why you're searching for a relationship that deal with the emptiness of life, then I urge you and invite you to figure out how you can, in the best of ways, step into those, fill those holes within yourself so that when you do connect with someone, it becomes a one plus one is 10 versus a 0.5 plus 0.5 equals less than one. The second advice that no one's taught you is that you are going to be seeking for lots of qualities in men, especially this day and age. There's going to be a laundry list of ideas and needs that you'll tell yourself you need when you connect with someone. And it can become overwhelming. It can also become excluding of humanity as a whole because we can become so specific that no one fits the bill. So what I'd like for you to do is to circle it back to one quality. If you start searching for this one quality, two things will happen. One is you'll disqualify lots of men that feel exciting but don't do the trick. And you'll give the time and energy to evaluate potentiality with other guys that you may have in a previous life dismissed. And that is you want to look for a conscious man. Forget about all the things you tell yourself right now you need a guy. If you focus on this one quality, you'll probably give yourself a huge advantage. There's multiple qualities about conscious men. I want to talk about three that make a huge difference. The first one is self-awareness. You want a guy who's self-aware to understand himself, to know what he brings to the table, what he doesn't, that he is conscious of the way he connects with human beings around him, that he can take up space in a room, but also not be oblivious to the fact that what he says might be offensive or unwarranted. Second part of being is integrity. You want a guy who has a deep sense of value that he steps into and that his words and his mind and his actions match. 
And the third aspect that you want to evaluate within this consciousness of a guy is that the guy has a sense of purpose that doesn't have to be tied to his work, but he understands fundamentally and foundationally he's here for something bigger than for his own self-aggrandizement or self-pleasure. He understands responsibility. He understands adding value, contributing, making life better in some way, big or small, for somebody else other than himself. The third advice that can really switch your experience of dating is that in this dynamic of dating, there's going to be the pursuer and the pursued. And it's not something you have to buy in for me if you don't want to. In this polarity of connection between two human beings, there are always going to be masculine and feminine energies and essences that mix and sometimes both within yourself, masculine and feminine, and in him. But ultimately, if you're seeking a guy who's moving things forward, then understand that you're looking for a guy who is going to be more on the pursuant side of things. That doesn't mean chasing. That doesn't mean begging. That doesn't mean pleading. That means he is taking action. He is owning the process of getting a chance to know you. That doesn't mean you won't text him. That doesn't mean you won't initiate. It means that primordially, he's going to be the one stepping up to start making things happen. Dynamics will switch and things will level out at some point. But I want to make sure that if you are one of those women who want to be pursued, that you are clear from the beginning when you connect with men, that that's something that you enjoy. That's something that you prefer. Why? Guys are confused these days. Guys don't want to impose more on you and then be called creepy. Guys also don't want to be a doormat. So when you're clear from the beginning and you can express that you really thrive in a dating relationship, when a guy steps up, he calls, he initiates, he plans, then he will be far more likely to step into that and move the relationship process without you having to spin all the plates and do all the work. That doesn't mean you're passive and that doesn't mean you don't do things. It just means that you are taking an active stance in evaluating. If he wants to get to know you, he will. The fourth bit of advice that no one's ever taught you is that you need to qualify early or suffer. What does that mean? That's a big word. It means that if you want to not waste time with men, not fall for shiny objects, not go for guys that feel like they check some of the boxes, but they end up not checking the boxes at the end of the day is that you get to ask questions that feel uncomfortable at the beginning and only proceed if those questions have an answer that is a match to what you're seeking. A lot of women feel very scared of expressing their needs or asking questions because they feel like they will be coming off as too strict, too stiff, too needy. And the truth is there's a difference between being worthy and being needy. Being worthy means you know what you want and you only invest time on guys who seem at least in principle to want what you want. Needy means you can't meet your own needs and you're seeking to self-soothe with somebody else. You're seeking to fill the void of your existence through another human being. So when you qualify early and you ask the right questions, and this could be in the chatting phase before you get a chance to meet in person, some guys won't pass the test of those questions, which means maybe there's a guy there that you would have felt a lot of chemistry with, but not good for you. And instead of kind of brainwashing yourself into saying, well, I'm going to give him a chance, you from the beginning, don't waste your time where the energy is not going to flow your way. Now, before I share my last three points, which are really powerful for you to understand and change, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not aware of the root cause of why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women create the kinds of relationships they want when nothing else had worked. And I've put together a quiz with those learnings that can share with you in 60 seconds or so, the number one reason you're still single. So if you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this, answer a few simple questions, and you'll get two things. Answer the question why you're still single and a custom report based on your unique blind spot that's going to share with you what's one thing you can do starting today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. The fifth advice that no one's ever told you is that instant chemistry is what most people are seeking, but instant chemistry is usually a big, bold trap. I'm not saying that you can't have instant chemistry and end up having a lifelong, amazing, passionate sustainable relationship with someone. But I'm here to say that the majority of those times where you connect with someone and the chemistry is off the charts, it's not going to go anywhere and it could actually go against you. It could actually sink you. Why? Because the instant chemistry myth that when you see someone, your eyes will burst with joy and the angels will sing and the ocean will part 
and that you will know that person's the one. That's something we kind of have been seeking for a few centuries now. And it isn't true, number one, because you can create chemistry with more time. And number two, because sometimes you get attached to someone who's not good for you, but the feelings are so overwhelming that it blinds you. It's like a big ball, bright light shines in your face and you're unable to see their flaws, the red flags, how it's incompatible with you. And all the time you continue to tell yourself, this is the person I've been looking for because it feels so good. But feeling super good about someone and it being sustainably long-term good for you are two different things. So pacing yourself, giving guys that you don't feel that instant burst of chemistry initially a chance, that doesn't mean that you have to continue dating them if nothing develops, but that you really take a big stake in the sand to tell yourself that you will stop dating purely on the way you feel that instant chemistry with someone. If you're someone who's done this a few times, you might even be telling yourself you don't do this. I urge you to take a look at the last few guys you rejected and also the guys you said yes to. And I ask you to go back and see how much of a role that chemistry and that feeling of butterflies in your stomach have to do with whether you chose that guy or not. The sixth bit of advice that no one's taught you is that if you want a guy to step up, you need to give him a chance to step up. And by that, I mean to express your needs. Expressing your needs is something very vulnerable because someone could say no. Someone could make fun of you for having needs that are specific. But here's what happens. When a guy shows up in a way that is not what you're looking for and you let it slide because you feel the chemistry or you outright say you're out of my life and it's not something that warrants the guy being out of your life, then you fail to provide him with an opportunity or a ladder to step up. You're not there to be that guy's coach or therapist. You are there to say, you're different from me and here's how I like to do things. Here's what I prefer. Here's what I love. Here's what would make sense for me, make me feel respected and loved and seen. So when you're able to express yourself in perfect place it might be, here's how I would like for you to do things in the future with me. Here's what would make me feel feeling the blank. You give a guy a chance to step up or step down, but don't either leave gold on the table or push your emotions and feelings down and allow the guy to continue creating an experience that isn't fulfilling for you, but you're just seeking for some future gain. The last bit of advice that I'll share today is that if you hear nothing else, but you allow for the man to invest emotionally first before he invests physically with you, that you will save yourself from years of pain on two fronts. Number one, if a guy invests emotionally in you before he invests physically in you, there's gonna be much more of a sticking mechanism for him to not just have fun with you and then put you in the category of fun girl I have fun with on the weekends, but actually someone who feels more attachment towards you and can step up into a deeper degree of commitment. The second thing that it will do is it will prevent you from giving a whole pass to a guy because as I said earlier, the intensity feels strong. That really is either not good for you or toxic for you. Hope this is helpful and useful and insightful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me because this hike can grow and reach more women if you click like and subscribe. Too many people watch the videos without subscribing and it makes a big difference. So if you're one of those, just hit the button, it's free and it'll make a big difference for me. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.